Lovely. Sorry about that. Good. Thank you for bearing with us, everyone. Um, welcome. And, and again, just to reiterate message from the, the the previous talk thanks for, for sticking around with us on the last talk of the day i just felt a lovely breeze however my back so it's nicely uh, freshened me up for the for the talk now um so just some very quick introductions so, so i'm jamie morris um, i'm based in the higher education futures institute at the university of birmingham and then uh, i'm joey spink i'm also based within i'm going to say hefe yeah 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 if we use the term hefe it's an abbreviation it's an abbreviation for the higher education futures institute just to clarify that that acronym we tend to use acronyms a lot in um, not just our institution but at, at nearly every institution so uh, just to clarify that um so what we'd like to do is give you a very uh very brief uh, whistle stop tour again uh, and that contains some of our reflections from certainly the last couple of years organizing and managing uh, uh, our annual learning and teaching conference and um, in hefe as well so we will give you a bit of context on exactly what what hefe is uh, but i think we then get into the really interesting part which is which is where joey will come in and talk about what tech we used to to really facilitate that and, and bring it to life and make it a an ongoing and an active um event as well um, so, as I mentioned, uh, HEFI, so we're the Higher Education Futures Institute, that's a very brief um, synopsis of what our mission statement is. Um, the reality of that is that we do a lot, lots of different things that encompass that, but we are a staff facing development unit um, and and very, very roughly what we aim, we aim to do is, is encourage staff to, to adopt good learning and teaching practices, be it generally, but also uh, uh, using our core digital tools at the university as well so again we are based centrally and we've been around since around 2017 which predates certainly when i when i joined in 2018 and we very crudely have have two two strands of 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 work and and, and team so i'm i'm in the educational development team and um, so we run various accredited programs uh, at the university so that includes a, a pg cert in higher education for new staff at the university who are involved in teaching and learning um, but also um, ha having our, our in-house uh, professional recognition scheme to apply for fellowships of the higher education academy as well which we call the beacon scheme as well so that, that that's 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 roughly what we do there are there are lots more provision that we do um, but that's in a nutshell what education development and aims to do um, at its core and um, we also have um, our happy digital team um which have a mixture really of, of, of centrally based staff but also teams that are situated within within colleges as well so quite an interesting mix um, and I suppose it's worth worth also noting as well that in relation to to the conference, um, it often acts as quite a nice um, focal point for educational development and digital to come together. Um, I think historically we have been quite quite separate in some elements, and the certainly collaboration that goes on. But I think the conference often provides a nice opportunity to to bring us together. Um, we too do tend to deliver the, the the conference at the end of the academic year as well so it acts as quite a nice culmination i think of ref and reflecting on on the academic year gone and just offering a space really for, for staff who are based within our colleges and in professional services to come together and talk about their learning and teaching practices on on whichever theme uh, we, we we base the conference on so if you go to the next one joey so just to give you a, 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 a taster, really, of, of what, what we what we do in relation to the, our annual learning and teaching conferences in HEFI, um, they tend to be they tend to be focused and certainly influenced by what's going on on externally as well. So, if I point to point to this here, you can just see a very rough overview of what we've done since since 2018, since I've joined, in terms of having a very rough overarching theme. And then it's it's our job institutionally to explore that and offer that space for for people to, to come in and showcase what they do in relation to learning and teaching um it's i suppose um just just to reiterate the overall aim of what we want to talk about is is our narrative will really focus on our reflections from 2022 and 2023 um, so our, our conference on sustainable ed education also had uh, a, a sub theme of, of future skills, but also uh, it was really influenced by the, the sustainable development goals um, and also the 2023 version this year, which we'll, we'll finish with some reflections on, was very much influenced by the teaching excellence framework of having recently submitted narrative for that. Um, and we decided on educational gains because it was very much this, this nebulous area um, that I think it, in particular, how you sort of articulate it is quite interesting to get people from different disciplines and then talk about their their practice. So that's roughly what we want want to do at, at the the conferences um, very generally as well. Yeah. Um, so in terms of what that looks like, um, there's, there's quite a lot involved in the planning of a conference. And I think where that kind of Ed Dev and digital uh, strands of heavy meat is kind of how to 
maximize the efficiency of that conference in terms of inputs so how are we having people engage with the conference whether that be on our edge based edge baston based com, uh, campus mm. or our dubai campus how we make that feel like one conference and not two kind of distinct um, versions of the same conference and then how we make sure those themes are permeating through how we do all of that um, so initially one of the challenges we had coming into planning hefi 22 we're looking at now um, was a, a sudden peak in covid again um, and we're talking a week, a week and a half before the conference ran, mm. which meant that we weren't just getting dropouts of people that were attending, but we were getting dropouts of people who were planning on speaking. Mm. Um, so suddenly a conference that was designed as being the kind of big return of face-to-face -face conferences for HEFI had to pivot slightly and provide a bit more of a hybrid model than we were planning on. Mm. Um, there was always some intention to deliver hybrid in some capacity. So as we mentioned, we have the Dubai campus. There was a need to provide a version of the conference that was accessible to them. Uh, but suddenly we had speakers that had to be presenting from home and whether that be through covid or i think we had a speaker who rolled his ankle the morning of the mm -hmm. conference so it still managed to speak but had to do it um, remotely uh, all of those factors meant that we suddenly had to rapidly change the way we were approaching a lot of this um the themes of sustainability permeated through so we had poster presentations we made sure that those posters were displayed on screens rather than printed um, and that kind of idea of having things digitally available where possible also folded through to our conference app um, so all that being kind of pulled into one place as a, as a kind of central focus for mm. the digital aspects of the conference. Um, and then again, a quick touch on the Dubai campus provision. So all the sessions were recorded, but there was that need to kind of deliver in remote where possible. Um, and there was kind of some conversations and decisions on how much of the conference do we offer? And I think one of the takeaways from Heavy 22 was that we probably bit off a bit more than we could chew in terms of the delivery of that remote conference. Um, partially coupled with the amount of work we were taking on, partially coupled with the changes on schedule, but mm -hmm. there was kind of an attempt at streaming as much as possible. And actually that meant that the um, requirements from staff members to support that was, was much higher. Mm -hmm. um, so the next slide's gonna take you through our conference app, which is really kind of the centerpiece of everything that we put together. Um, we say it's an app, it, it's not really an app. Um, it's a course developed in uh, Articulate Rise, which if you don't know, it's a, a browser-based um, authoring software. The idea behind this was to provide the resources and agenda for the conference as easily accessible as possible. So we could send this out via a link. Um, if you look at the top right hand corner, we're able to stream essentially the same version of this app on any device, which meant that um, we could send it out beforehand so people get an idea of the program, but then on the day they could use their phones and still be looking through that program initially. Um, what you'll see is we actually ended up expanding the use of that app much more than we initially intended. So all of the conference recordings eventually sat in the app, um, all of the resources, so whether that be posters, um, slides, any of the kind of um, peripheral stuff around the sorts of, you know, the, the launching stuff of the conference, that all sat within the app. Um, it actually became a bit of a bigger project than we initially intended, um, but one that was really well received. So if we go to the next slide, we've got some feedback. Um, so we had an average of 4.55 for our overall experience, really positive. Um, the hybrid presentations were received really well. Um, and I think from our point of view, that felt like the more chaotic side of it. We, mm. we felt like that was maybe where we fell over mm -hmm. and, and definitely took some of those learnings into the next conference. Um, and the conference app was praised. And I think this, this comment from that feedback really informed a lot of what we did the next year, which was we felt the app was quite good, but kind of didn't really... Um, see that practically on the day, but we got some feedback saying that it felt like it was a treasure trove of conference resources um, and meant that there was a support resource there that was there uh, well beyond the conference itself, the feedback we got was. Um, so that was really interesting because this thing that was initially, initially just a digital program actually became a real focal point for the feedback we got. Um, so moving forward, what did we take into HEFI 23? This was predominantly a face-to-face -face campus and a face-to-face conference and because we didn't have the complications of needing to provide hybrid uh, as consistently as consistently if we had edge and colleagues they were told that it would be face to face they would be on campus our remote provision was simply for dubai mm -hmm. um, so there were some conversations around how we do that we developed the dubai specific program so the decision was made to slightly scale back what we were doing before not stream every room because that kind of prevented um flexibility on the day, but take one room, stream that room fully for Dubai, uh, make sure the campus know which rooms are available, know what they're going to be seeing from that and know kind of how to expect that. Um, but also part of the 
decision to make sure Dubai didn't feel like they were just watching a stream of a conference, but they were in a conference, um, informed some of the other stuff we did. So the conference app suddenly became less passive. So all the questions for the day ran through the app. Mm. Every room had a Padlet wall. That Padlet wall was used to answer questions, whether or not you were in the room watching it or sat at home in Dubai. Mm. Um, and that meant that there was a, an equal footing in terms of whose question was going to get asked and whose ideas could be kind of explored within the room. Mm -hmm. um, we included the social media wall and a specific Dubai program to them. So again, pulling that out of the app and giving them their own version so they weren't seeing, well, I can see one room, but there's actually eight rooms, but it felt like a focused curated program for them and then making sure we were plastering hashtags across all of those social media channels so that again all that kind of feedback from social media whether that be on edge baston or dubai comes into the same place mm -hmm. um, and that as a kind of development of, of the app as the kind of i guess central side part of the conference really kind of improved my use of heavy 23. Uh, and then one of the more important things we did it's underrated but we pulled in a lot of students to volunteer which meant that some of those problems we were having in the first year, people not knowing where their rooms were, people arriving late and not having their badges, some of the people that were more technically able to support weren't involved in those queries. We had students who could help make sure people knew how to get to the app, knew where they were going, which meant that I essentially sat in a room and helped stream a room all day. Um, but means that some of those kind of firefighting issues that, that crop up of the day that you can't expect, you've suddenly got slightly more capable people available to support on. I guess it's, it's also part of an ongoing... <laughs> I guess area a, a strategy I suppose in HEPI is to start including students in lots of our, our core core areas and core practices so although although quite a small inclusion in, in terms of bringing students in and helping with the organization is actually huge just so we could we could focus um, focus efforts particularly on on that on that hybrid room that, that we used in the end wasn't it yeah um it didn't all go perfectly so this is the stream that we had from Dubai I think you'll pretty quickly notice that there's no heads in that image um, that was a result of using a teaching space room that was tested for, for use a day before the conference. Everything was fine in between us testing, getting the conference running. Mm. Someone had been in there, the camera had been moved. Um, so there's definitely takeaways to, to pull from that to make sure that you can see faces. Mm. Um, but also understand that the conference is it's bigger than Heffy working in a building, but there are um, other departments that handle other parts of this that need to be aware that there are, there are parts of this conference that need to run smoothly. Yeah. Um, they also involved quite a lot of running across campus. So the next slide is just us with trolleys and hundreds of bottles of water running across cam campus. Um, the sorts of things that you don't really think about. You, you buy water for your conference, you put it in your office, you forget that that needs to get to the conference. Um, so it was a very sweaty morning running through that. Um, but overall, I think Happy 23 went really well mm. and there's some really good feedback we can kind of pull from that looking into next year. Yeah, and yeah, as as Javi said, there were there were certainly areas in in regards to the the sort of tech components, weren't there, that we we can take away and improve on, particularly the the headless keynotes and and various other things. But yeah, I think in in general it went well. Um, the the Rise app was was evaluated quite well and mentioned quite consistently in the feedback that we got, which was great, and and it was great to see also the active. Um, component mentioned as well uh, the social media wall was great wasn't it? it was a it was a it was a real sort of hit overall and that that consistent place to sort of reference um social media engagement was great um and also that the inclusion of that student voice as we mentioned we've been trying to do a bit more consistently um was also also mentioned uh as well um i think actually the 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 feedback overall was was as i mentioned very much positive in relation to that but also we did we did get some uh slightly negative feedback around some of the more logistical elements of the day which were things that we can address so we were, we were comfortable with that in the end so if you want to go on to the last couple of slides joey so we have put together a very short um, list of of our sort of lessons learned and recommendations and uh, those of you who have been involved in in conference uh, organization and um, might might agree we mentioned that rise was was received well and i think we'll continue to, to use that i think for for the next conference um the the idea of making sure particularly for that 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 dubai element and not treating it like an add-on but as something that's core and central to the development of the conference program was key and something that we'll be will be continue continuing to do and one thing that was that was really useful particularly just to give an overview and ensure people were confident on the day when facilitating sessions were were, were giving very 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 detailed briefing documents and offering a space to brief any facilitators before the day as well so they were also received very positive if you go on to the, the next slide which i think is the 
the last in terms of uh, in terms of the slides around this. Um, it was also good to have a look at, at some of the the literature. Um, there was actually a, a, an article based on on organising and delivering hybrid uh, conferences in higher education, which was great. Um, so there were some examples of um, recommendations. There were there were around fifteen or sixteen of these uh, of these recommendations, or, or slightly more. And it was all just great to have a look at, at some literature, which basically reinforces some of the principles that we'd adopted in the first place. Which is like a slightly backwards way of doing it, but it was good, always good to know that that some of those some of those are reinforced. And in particular, and it's something that's been noticeable today as well, is the importance of having those spaces for. For interaction for you know that, that informal networking and, and digesting the talks um as well so i think that's it from us i believe um happy to take any questions but otherwise thanks everyone for coming along and, and listening to us thank you, thank you. yes <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's always me that goes first with the questions. <laughs> uh, I, I I thought that was brilliant. I'm really really interested. I'm responsible for organising our. Um, I like your branding, Hefe, con conference. Ours is very imaginatively called the Huddersfield University Teaching and Learning Conference. So I think we need to look at that. I think we need to look at our branding. Uh, I think you've done some fantastic stuff there. Uh, I just wonder if I could contact you after this and we could share ideas and share your experiences and perhaps leverage some of the fantastic things you've done to organise our con conference next year. We we are face to face. We don't do hybrid. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't do hybrid in 22 either. We wanted to have that um, social and peer networking um, element to our conference. Actually, 22 was relatively successful. We had quite a high take up on that. But um, I'd, I'd love to talk to you offline. Uh, and bring some of my other team in to have that conversation, look at the stuff you've done and pinch some of your ideas if that's okay. Easy answer to that, yeah. But happy to happy to do that, yeah. Great, yeah. thank you. Absolutely. Happy days. Thank you. Yeah, I think we've got time for one more question. I don't want to keep anyone from drinks, which I'm <laughs> sure are out there, but I think I think you deserve another question. So um yeah, it was fantastic the organization looks really good um just in terms of my reflection on when i've engaged with conferences online um have you noticed any difference or did you notice any kind of difference in the engagement to your face-to-face -face participants in the online um with things like the engagement with the padlet was that something you were even able to get some kind of metric on <laughs> yes um so the majority of the padlet comments from dubai was that they couldn't see any faces Okay. Uh, which was useful feedback. Um, I think there, there were, we didn't necessarily have a way of, of determining which ones were from Dubai and which ones were from the room. Um, partly by design, I think the idea of having them all feel like one bank of questions meant that we weren't really asking them to, to differentiate. Um, we had consistent viewers in the room. I think the the signups from Dubai weren't huge, but it's, it's not as big a campus. So I think where we were looking at a few hundred kind of on campus, we were looking at kind of within tens and twenties from Dubai. We were consistently getting people. I think, you know, we told the hands up, we'd say that if the, if the technical side of things and the, the cameras were working better, maybe the retention for some of those as the day went on would have, have stuck around, but also the timings are weird. It, it gets later there quicker than it does with our conference program. So mm -hmm. I think there's, there's some feedback we got from them and then all the feedback kind of spoke to what we already saw. Um, so it's, it's good to know that we were, at least planning on fixing problems that did exist mm. and weren't being given new ones. Mm. Perhaps there's perhaps there's some some room for us to I've got the perhaps some room for us to think about because what's missing when you attend online, unless you specifically design it in, which I think we could do the next time, is is where that social interaction takes place. You know, you're there and you can follow along with the sessions, but what goes on beyond that in terms of networking and and, and that collaboration and conversations that happen is probably something that we could potentially consider the next year as well. Okay, thanks everyone for coming. Thank you to um, the four speakers today. Um, I hope you've had a good day one of this conference and uh, yeah, have a lovely day two and three as well. Thank you very much. <laughs>